Hi guys, so today we're going to be looking at sketching higher order polynomials in factorized form. This is something that appears quite often in methods and it's a little trick that not a lot of people are aware of. And this is going to save you time and save you marks in the exam. So, let's look at an example I have here. We have three factors here. x equals negative 2. x equals negative 2, x equals 1, and x equals 3. Now, what we're going to look for to sketch this polynomial are the repeated factors. Now, what a repeated factor is, is a factor that appears more than once. And so, if we were to expand our function out now, it's going to be x plus 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 2, and then times x minus 1, and then times 3 minus x, of four times. So we can see that they're appearing more than once. x plus 2 appears three times given by the power x minus 1 once and 3 minus x four times. So what this is going to help us with is that a, a factor that appears an even amount of times is going to have a turning point at, x, at that x value. And a function that appears an odd amount of times is going to have a point of inflection. Okay, so from this, we can see that at x equals negative 2, there's going to be a point of inflection. At x equals 1, that's just a regular intercept like we're used to. And at x equals 3, there's going to be a turning point because it has an even power. So let's mark in where each of those factors are. We have x equals minus 2. We have x equals 1. And x equals 3. Now we know that there's a, t a point of inflection at x equals negative 2, there's a regular intercept at x equals 1, and there's a turning point at x equals 3. So there's two ways we could sketch this, and I'm going to sketch it now. The first way we could do is that there's a point of inflection at x equals negative 2, then there's a regular intercept at x equals 1, and then there's a turning point at x equals 3. So that's the first way we could sketch it. We could also sketch it in a reflection in the x-axis. Okay, so it's just the same curve but flipped. So how we're going to determine which curve we take is that we've got to look at the coefficient of our x of the highest degree, so the one with the highest power, when we expand our equation. So when we expand y, what's our x of the highest power going to have as its coefficient? So we can see that when we multiply these out, this one has a positive 1 as its coefficient. This one a positive 1. And this one here has a negative 1. But because it has an even power, the negative becomes a positive. Because we could simply rearrange that factor as being x minus 3 because it has a positive power. So we can safely take out the negative causing no repercussions. So therefore when we expand out our equation, our x which is going to have the power 8 is going to have positive 1 as its coefficient. So therefore this means that as x goes off to infinity so does our y value. It goes off to positive infinity. If we had a negative coefficient, we'd see our curve go off to negative infinity. So we're going to take this curve because it simply goes off to positive infinity. Hopefully this tip helps you in your Methods 3-4 study and hopefully it saves you marks on your exam. Thank you.